Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we've got a rock review of the first album by Blue Murder. So if you're interested in that, then hold on for the video. Um, I will put in the description the timestamp for that video. But we know you're here for the beer. So we're going to start now with the first beer review. This is today's beer. This is by Pipeline Brewing Company. It is called Forgotten Dreams. It's a double dry hopped IPA. It's in a beautiful can. Look at the beautiful artwork there. Sort of all, sort of, it's like a sort of um, a sunset there. Um, I don't know if that's actually down. No, it doesn't look, there's, there's mountains and everything. But this is, uh, this brewery is based down in, um, in St Agnes in Cornwall. Um, don't know much about it, but seeing it, love the artwork for, let's give that a try. So it's coming in at 5.3%, double dry hop. Let's get this beer out the can and into the glass. See what it's like, shall we? Okay, so double dried hop, always a favourite of mine. Um, we'll just check the um, the can, just let that settle a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, the hops are Sentinel, Simcoe, and Citra and Mosaic. So it's four different hops in this. Um, very hazy, nice, densely um, densely packed bubbles there we've got a two finger head there probably a little bit more but probably they're just badly pouring and already another one of these great beers where you can smell smell all the aromas all the fruits coming up before you can put your nose to it but we're going to get an aroma now strong on the pineapple bit of mango very tropical um again looking at those sort of hops um Certainly Simcoe, Citra, you know, they always give up strong tropical notes. And this is no different. I'm getting pineapple, a little bit of sweetness there, uh, mango passion fruits. Yeah, real juicy fruits, you know, fruits, you know, like the, um, you know, the sweet, the fruit salad. That's the sort of smell. Lovely, fruity, but a little bit of sweetness there as well. Okay. There, if you're gonna get a closer look at that. Beautiful yellow haze, lovely fluffy head. Let's get it down, shall we? Cheers, everyone. It reminds me of another beer that I've had. It's like a New England, New England IPA. Those sort of um, tropical notes sort of turn into citrus and grapefruit as the flavor's coming in. A little bit of bat little bit of bitterness, dryness on the back end there. Very typical of this sort of beer. I was quite surprised actually because a lot of these these sort of um, these sort of beers and flavours usually have a higher ABV than this, but this is a fairly sessionable uh, drop here. Beautiful yellow. It's a slight peppiness. Pepper, sorry, I can't even say the words. Slight pepperness, you know, there's a little bit of pepper there that gives it a little bit of spiciness. And there's a slight savoury note. Now, certainly I've seen um, a few reviews, give a shout out to Ballman there, who, who who's also a YouTuber that I, I watch quite regularly. You know, he sort of had a beer the other day and he said, yeah, it had a sort of onion sort of taste to it. And I thought, onion in a beer? But... I can't really smell it, but there's a, there is that slight savoury taste on this beer. I think it's the grapefruit and a little bit of the freshness, sort of almost like a spring onion. Strange on a beer. It's not overpowering, but it's definitely there. That sort of pepperness, spiciness, a little bit of onion there. Yeah, it makes it very pleasant. I mean, it's a very sort of pleasant, smooth uh, beer. In terms of the mouthfeel, I say it was a sort of medium carbonation. You can you can taste it once you put it in your mouth. It sort of the carbonation sort of rolls around, rolls the flavours around in your mouth to get that zinginess, the pepperness, spiciness. Um, it's it's very nice. I wouldn't say it was that sort of soft as some beers. Very typical for me of a New England IPA, uh, even though it's a, a double dry hop. Um, what does it say? It says a bit more citra and mosaic as the double dry hop. 
pushing the flavour sky high. London Fog provides the fruit at our fruit fight free for all, bring on the fog. So obviously they, they work with other people in terms of getting those, those hops together. Um, really nice, Pipeline Brewing Company. We'll try a few more of those. Uh, this is a double dry hop IPA. Right, let's get the scores in, shall we? Okay, the scores are in for Pipeline Brewing Company and this is the Forgotten Dreams. It's a double dry hopped IPA coming in at a 5.3% ABV. It's got Sentinel, Simcoe, Citra and Mosaic hops and the scores are in. Aroma, so lovely, lovely aromas. Lovely tropical notes there. Pineapples and mangoes, bit of grapefruit, really nice. I'm giving this a 14 out of 20 for aroma. Now, look at the appearance of that. Beautiful yellow, little fluffy white head, really nice, exactly what you look want, want from an IPA. I'm giving this eight out of 10 for appearance. Flavor, really enjoyed this. It, the fruitiness, you know, is there, but there's also this sort of slight spicy, savory sort of note to it. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, so I'm giving this a 34 out of 40 for uh, flavor. Next up is value for money. Four different types of hops in this. Um, it's a 440 mil can. It's coming in at four and a half quid. I'm giving this an eight out of 10 for um, value for money. Next up is overall experience. Really enjoyed this. Um, I'm gonna have another sip. Could drink, could drink two or three of these quite easily. 5.3%, uh, reasonably sessionable. Really enjoyable, nice flavour, really good example. I'm giving this a 15 out of 20 for my overall experience. So we'll tot up those scores and we get a 79 out of 100. It's another white snake beer. Top of the top, top level white snake beer. So a white snake beer, which is top level, what kind of song would this be? Well, in a past review, I sort of mentioned Still of the Night, a great song. I'm going to say that this, this beer is a Looking for Love. That's also off the 1987 album. It's a great, great song. But what I love about that song is it's got an amazing outro solo by John Sykes. And John Sykes, he's the man behind Blue Murder that's coming up in the review. So hold on, get ready for the review. Dave Robinson, if you're out there watching, you need to listen to this review and then you need to listen to this. Then you need to go on the Spotify link and get the album and listen to it because I know you're going to love it. But a lot of you will love it as well. So until the next video, keep on rocking. So, uh, another rock review today. And today we're doing the debut album by Blue Murder. Now this album was released in 1989. Now, can't talk about this album without talking about White Snake 1987. It was a tr that's a tremendous album. You may have seen a review on the channel. Um, a big platinum seller, uh, but larger the large amount of its success wasn't down to is was down to really one guy, and that guy isn't David Coverdale. That guy is the guitarist and co-writer of a lot most of the songs on that album, John Sykes. So before 1987 was released, David Coverdale in fact fired all the musicians, including John Sykes, that appeared on that album, um, you know, who recorded the album, and recruited a whole new um, group of musicians that were playing, going to play on the subsequent tour, and obviously to also shoot the videos that were promoting the album. So many people don't realise um, who played all the guitar on the album and who actually was a big contributor of it. So undeterred, John Sykes. Um, after being fired from White Snake, decided to form his own band called Blue Murder. And with the help of uh, ex The Firm bass player Tony Franklin and drummer Carmen Apis, originally John had um, a, one of these fellow White Snake um, fellow White Snake drummers, uh, Cozy Powell, who was actually going to drum on the album, uh, but he decided to leave. And he also was going to have, on the original demos, some of the uh, the singing was performed by Ray Gillen, who used to sing, who sang with um, with Black Sabbath in the 80s, uh, and then went on a form of band with Jake Lee called Badlands. But 
John Sykes did sing on some of the uh, the original demos, and the AOR A and R man executive at the time, John Calder, he sort of said, encouraged John, and said, "I think you should be the singer in this band, and you can handle all the vocal duties." So basically, they decided to uh, carry this band off as a free piece uh, with John Sykes on guitar and um, and vocals, Tony Franklin on bass, or he actually plays fretless bass on this album, and, and Carmen a piece on on drums. So. This power trio decided to take this album and certainly when you hear it for the first time you can see how similar certainly the guitar sound is um, to Whitesnake 87. There's certainly a big wall of guitar sounds on there. Um, a lot of this is down to the fact that the, um, the producer of this album was Bob Rock, um, who really who did a real great production job on this, and he actually went on to um, to do albums with Motley Crue and, uh, and Metallica, to name just a couple uh, that were huge, huge sellers. But so the sort of multi-layered guitars and a strong use of harmonics, which really sort of John Sykes' signature sound, is all over this album. Um, and I think that because of that, it's um, you know it's a really great it's a really great sounding album. Even though it came out in the late eighties, it still sounds fresh and current today, in my opinion. So one of the big surprises, though, when you first listen to this album, you know John Sykes is a bit of a guitar god. But what the big surprise is, is how good a singer he is. It's not often that those, uh, you know, those sort of real guitar gods can be can actually sing. But his vocals and are really top class throughout that. And as well, I think you've got to commend the other musicians as well. There's a massive, massive, big drum sound with Carmen. And, and Tony Franklin plays fretless bass. And it really complements the sound, really adds layers to the sort of sound of the album. Um, so let's go through the track listing, shall we? So it opens up with a real flurry of keyboards and, and massive, you know, there's a big bass line. Tony Franklin is noodling across that intro before a massive big drum fill comes in and then about a dozen layered guitars of John Sykes's sort of harmonic trademark very pronounced here so this song's called Riot it's a real rocker and it's presented you know in a real sort of you know and I talk about a lot about a big wall of sound with lots of multi-layer guitars Tony Frank's bass is pretty high up in the mix which is pretty good and you do wonder why you don't hear much more fretless bass in a lot of rock albums um, John shows that he's really a great singer though. I mean, he can, he can give David Coverdale a run for his money with lots of screaming and wailing. Now, the second song, Sex Child, uh, keeps it up with a rock, great riff, but there's a few choice lyrics that I think John must have ripped off from White Snake's uh, book of dodgy sexual innuendos. Uh, lyrics like, I'm gonna slip and slide, I'm gonna come inside, are a little bit cringeworthy, but hey, it was the 80s, you know, and hair metal was still big. Uh, the track breaks down a little bit with some more great bass playing, keyboards, and John almost ripping off his own version of uh, Still of the Night singing, I'm going to give you some loving girl, before it sort of really breaks down with a great shred type solo, uh, making it really scream and sound like almost like a loud hailer. Um, so lyrics aside, it's a great track. Um, I'm sure this is John Sykes telling Coverdale that he can bring the sort of sex into his rock and roll just like Whitesnake are famous for. Third song is Valley of the Kings. It's a slight step, it's a little mini epic really. And now John is really channeling his sort of, um, his sort of best Led Zeppelin homage to songs like Kashmir. It's, it's a song full of sort of Eastern promise. Um, again, lots of uh, upfront um, fretless bass at the beginnings. Big guitar harmonics, lots of keyboards, great drum beat. It's a real classic Blue, Mur Blue Murder track. It's one of the highlights on the album. The next song, in my opinion, is probably the weakest. Just because it doesn't really sort, it doesn't feel like it fits within the album. Uh, John's playing more; it's all acoustic guitar. The song's called Jelly Roll, and it's it's more like John's another one of John's early bands. He was in Finn Lizzy, uh, you know, at the end of their their sort of uh, their time really. And this song sounds a little bit like uh, like something that Finn Lizzy would do. It's probably not as good for me because I don't see the big wall of guitar sound in there. But, you know, it was released as a single. I'm surprised it didn't do well because it's very sort of commercial. So then we get on to side two and it opens up with the song Blue Murder. Uh, a great straight head rocker. John Gray on, on great form here, both vocally and sonically. Great big fat guitar harmonics in this. Massive solo and then, you know, a massive sort of outro. A real great rocker. I love that song. 
Um, out of love, I suppose, is their um, is their love. You know, they're sort of you know John sort of saying, "Well, I co wrote is this love? I can do it again with out of love." Um, it shows how much he was involved in that writing because this does sound a little bit similar. Uh, it's a big sort of wave your lighters in the air sort of thing, but it's a real sort of power ballad, great heartfelt solo, it, and then near the end it sort of builds and builds with, with a fabulous outro solo. In fact, it's probably a bit more similar to the song Looking for Love uh, on that White Snake album, um, but it shows that, you know, that, that John can croon just as well as David Coverdale can. Uh, the next track is called Billy. It's a straight head rocker, slowly builds up slow, but then there's a great multi-layered sort of guitar riff and another great vocal. And it's probably one of the best solos on the album. Really great forward rocker there. It's got a slight little bit of Finn Lizzy there. Then you've got Ptolemy. So we're going back to that sort of Middle Eastern vibe as per like the Valley of the Kings song. It's a sort of mid-paced rocker um, with little tribal sound effects, pipes, lots of different keyboards. But there's a huge slab of guitar riff there. And, you know, John does it again with his harmonics really prominent in this song. It's another classic. Final song on the album is called Black Hearty Woman. A woman, sorry. It's a great rocker, but it's a real big nod to his other White Snakes, uh, for his White Snake days, really, because it sounds very similar to sort of songs like Bad Boys or Children of the Night from that album. It, you could almost see that there could be a little bit of a few recycled riffs in there. So that's the album, really. It's about 53 minutes long. It's a great album. It didn't get any airplay exposure. It was, came out the back end of the of the of the 80s. Um, but if you love White Snake 87, in fact, if you like any sort of White Snake 80s sort of period, or if you like um, any sort of hard rock at that sort of time, then you know you love it. If you're a guitarist out there especially so and this album review has been dedicated to my friend Dave Robinson who is a big guitar fan he's, he's a guitar brilliant guitar player and he loves John Sykes but I don't know whether you've read it, seen it listened to it yet Dave but this is an album you need to need to listen to so pause this review click on the Spotify link in the description here listen to this album all the way through because once you listen to it you'll realize it become one of your best albums so is this album as good as 1987? It's pretty damn close in my opinion. Um, 87 is a classic. Uh, this this is still pretty good though. Um, and you just realise that John Sykes, where are you now, John? Why aren't you making more albums? Um, because after this album, they did release another Blue Murder album, which I think is takes away some of this sound and sort of goes more into that sort of Finn Lizzy sort of sound. Then he did a few solo albums that just the songwriting wasn't as good. And over the last sort of 10 years ago, he's almost disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, so John, come back, do another Blue Murder album, get Tony and Carmen back, and I think that he could be another hit. Okay, so that's the end of this review of Blue Murder, debut album called Blue Murder.